Hello everyone, I'm Trent Luce. Welcome to another edition of Rural Route. Connecting rural and urban America is what it is all about, and we do it every single day at this time. Today I'm in St. Joseph, Missouri, actually at the American Angus office. We're going to be talking about genetics, genomics, and by the way, we are still without Kyle Bauer. I understand that he will be back. He's been in Washington, D.C. this week. I find it interesting, Stuart that my partner, who claims to be a farm broadcaster, goes to Washington, D.C. to be with the National Association of Farm Broadcasters, and that's the only time that he can't be on broadcasting is when he's with farm broadcasters. I'm not sure about his priorities. Dr. Stuart Bach. You know, I've got some Bach in my pedigree. I wonder if we're kin. We could be, we could be cousins. We'll have to check our DNA. Uh, Stuart, you're going to have to act like you're not afraid of me and, and climb <laughs> climb a little closer over here. I think we spelled it B-O-C-H, though. It was my my grandfather's mother was a Bach. That is possible. Looking at our hairline, it's possible that we, <laughs> we have a relative in common. <laughs> we look like cousins. I think I'm ahead of you, anyway, on losing. Identity. You know, I talk about science and technology in agriculture all of the time, and it's just pretty amazing what you're able to do through a company called Igenity when it comes to genetically identifying what these cattle really look like and what they're capable of. You know, Trent, it's really remarkable. If you think about the chronology of this, I mean, in my lifetime, I mean, I'm not ashamed to tell you that I'm over 50 years, and really this, the entire science of DNA has evolved from the discovery of DNA about 50 years ago to where we are now. We've now sequenced the genome of the human. We've sequenced the genome of virtually all of the major domestic animals. And more important than that is we're really beginning to understand uh, you know what the genome does, how it produces uh, you know the proteins that that drive life, and so you know today we have the ability to in essence get to you know the code of life and and what 's really spectacular about that is is it 's wonderful science, but it 's also driving some very practical applications that that have that benefits farmers ranchers in real time. Okay, Kevin Schultz listens to this program. I don't know if you know Kevin or not, but we better do all of this at a third grade level so Kevin can relate to it. Sequencing the genome, what exactly does that mean? So so essentially it's this, and that is the DNA in every individual consists of a whole series of molecules that we call nucleotides, and essentially they're, you know, A, C, G, T, and, and so on. And so um, the the sequence of the genome, the order of the base pairs, determines the uh, the genes, and those genes in turn determine the the function, uh, the the uh, the attributes of the animal. So very simply, we have in essence read the book of life, if you will, and the book of life consists of these nucleotides, these little molecules, and the molecules are strung together to form words. Those words get strung together to form sentences and paragraphs and chapters and so on and so on. So think about, you know, the genome is essentially just that. The, the nucleotides are the letters. They group together to form words. The words form sentences, which would be genes, and, uh, and that is how uh, an individual's attributes are expressed. So, so that's really kind of how I think about it. And you have to have a microscope to be able to read the book. Well, you need something a little more powerful than a microscope. <laughs> but, you know, the, but here's the remarkable thing, and that is, um, you know, there really isn't a lot of difference between you and your mule. Uh, I'm sure your wife... I get told that regularly, Stuart. Thanks for telling the entire world. I'm sure your wife would remind. Keep in mind, a mule's only half an ass, okay? <laughs> but, but you know, the, the, the truth of the matter is, Trent, that, that there is a lot of what we refer to as homology. There's a lot of similarity in the sequence in the genome between the human and the cow, for example. And so what what we've been able to do is take 
tools that have been developed for the human sequence uh, project and the human genome project and immediately apply them to the cattle genome and, and to the pig genome and the chicken and so forth. And so what that's allowed us to do is really accelerate our discovery and our understanding of what makes an Angus an Angus, what makes a limousine a limousine, and furthermore, what happens when you cross those. So we're, we really are beginning to, to understand that at the, the molecular level. And, and these tools, these sequencing tools, all that stuff, um, it just kind of is like the Wizard of Oz behind the curtain. It, it, it goes on. What comes out of it is just practical information that we can use to make sound breeding decisions. I want to continue, and, and obviously we've got a lot of time to explore this, but I want, I want to continue that, where we're at today and where we're going in the next couple of segments. Let's go back. Your lifetime. You're over 50. Uh, so you're born in 50? Mm-hmm. 1950. Wasn't it 47 that we first started using artificial insemination? Yeah, I mean, the science of the tech, it's, inter, it's very interesting, kind of the, the convergence of these technologies, things like, you know, AI uh, and, and so forth. All of them have come along, you know, basically in the last 40 or 50 years. And so what's interesting now is we're sort of able to, to now combine those, right? We can, you know, we can now begin to identify the superior genetics even earlier in life. We've got technologies like AI and sex to semen and, you know, uh, I mean, embryo transfer. Think about, you know, how embryo transfers come along in the past 20 years. And so together we can kind of merge all of those technologies, our knowledge of the genome, uh, our, our understanding of genetics, coupled with technologies like AI, embryo transfer, and so forth. And, uh, and together we can identify superior animals much earlier in life. We can identify traits uh, early in life that would otherwise have been very difficult for us to get a hold of, things like longevity. You know, how do you measure longevity? You, you know, you, you, you don't know an animal's longevity until it's almost past its its functional um, uh, lifespan. So we can take those technologies, Trent, we can combine them together so that we can identify superior animals, collect semen from them, you know, ovulate, you know, super ovulate cows, do embryo transfer, and, and uh, in fact, you know, we can take a, uh, uh, an egg uh, from, a, from an in vitro fertilization and actually take DNA from the egg and, and, uh, and, and sort of study the genome of the egg even before it's, it's implanted. So remarkable technology, all of it with the objective of, of producing an, uh, an animal that's more efficient and effective for the cattle producer and that provides the type and quality of, uh, of uh, product that the consumer desires. And, and as a consequence, you know, it's better, it's healthier, and it's in greater demand. And we'll come back and talk about the social conscience that might come along with that type of technology. But what I wanted to get to in the final two min- minutes of this segment is that in I was born in 66, so I missed the early artificial insemination. But Pretty much in your lifetime, which I used a barometer of 55. In 1955, we had the same exact number of cows that we have today in the United States. In other words, we're pulling the same amount of resources and yet feeding twice as many people protein. And it, it directly parallels the use of artificial insemination, embryo technology. And obviously, we've done things in the growing and production phase that have also contributed We've used hormones in the feedlot, which people don't like. But it's a combination of all of They don't like it because they don't understand that it is just part of their daily life. They think it's something separate, which I think we've got to have a great discussion about when you start talking about pulling genomes and DNA out of eggs and placing it in tomatoes, which, by the way, is an Internet myth as well. Stuart Bach, our guest, roll route to the program. Frederick Avenue. It's just nice to say that. We are going to saddle up. And ride our ponies to Sacramento immediately after the program. Oh, we just want to. More Roll Route with Stuart Bach after this.